you might recognize it from the previous mention or video and you know I quite like the machine it was um, for its time I thought it was a little bit ahead of its time built in 1987 which isn't isn't recent by any stretch of the imagination but it did its job and it did what it had to do very well now we have here a NC100 in Amstrad and as you can see both machines are very very similar in size they're both A4 machines they both have a similar sized keyboard and a very similar sized eight line screen. Now, the Amstrad one was built in 1992 and it's in some ways superior to the Z88 and one of those reasons is it has a proper full travel keyboard in comparison to the rubberized one which isn't bad as I think I've said before it's also thinner the Amstrad one is slightly thinner but it has a more of a pronounced area where the screen is it's a bit more of a raised area in comparison but at the end of the day they're almost identical apart from their usage you see whereas the Z88 is trying to do a lot of things at once and trying to be very much ahead of its time especially as far as portable machines were concerned The, um, the Amstrad is not. The Amstrad is just trying to be an Amstrad notepad. Easy to use, easy to get on with, and a little bit more intuitive than the Z88 is. Because once you turn the machine on, it basically tells you which combination of keys to press to access whichever program you want to access so for the word processor you press yellow and red you combine yellow and red and it gets into the word processor for the calculator you press yellow and green and for the diary you press yellow and blue really simple none of the Z88 double shift to turn on press index select your machine your program and then try and sort it out the Z8C8 is much harder to expand because it uses EEPROMs where the Amstrad uses a PCM CIA card which is not really that common today but you can still get hold of them and so it makes it easier to expand the machine. Battery life's about the same, 20 hours from AA batteries and it's nicer to type on it's nicer to use if you gave this to anyone they'd be able to use it within minutes if you gave this one to people it would take them a lot longer and they'd have to keep on referring to the manual the sheer amount of notes and key presses and combinations that are on the Z88 panel although useful as a guide is a lot harder to use than the very limited and reduced key presses and notation that's on the bottom of this screen So I've just pressed yellow and red and it's asking me if I want to start a new document well let's press red if I want to list your stored documents press green and if I want to print a document because it has a proper print support on it, it says press blue so if I want to press red dead simple red 
and it says please type a name for your new document and press return it's guiding you all the way through so if I say test press return okay and it says this is something I did before this is a test document and I think the keyboard is better than the Z80 or the Z88 rather and it is it's a nicer unit to type on there's no difference in weight there's no difference in the way they feel. The Amstrad feels as well built as the Sinclair generally. The Sinclair's keyboard lets it down because it's non-standard. And the way you power the machine on by pressing shift and shift to get the machine on and off is awkward. I mean, if you didn't read the manual, you didn't know about it, you'd struggle to turn the machine on. Where it's dead simple on the Amstrad one you press power now the Amstrad one out of both machines is a better machine it's easier to use it's nicer to use has a better keyboard has a proper printer port in it is easy to expand even in modern day usage so Unfortunately, Sinclair's quirks have let him down again, unfortunately, although it is a good machine. I'm not denying it. It was quite a nice machine. It does what it needs to do and it does it very well, but it's let down by his quirks, his rubber keyboard, his storage medium and expansion medium. And, you know, the lack of proper printer ports on it as well which you know at the end of the day you want to be able to just type your document and print it out and that's it and that's basically what the Amstrad unit was designed to be easy to use easy to connect up to things like printers etc easy to expand and as portable as possible the only downside is that you probably can't hear it on here as the Amstrad makes a sounds like a fan noise all the time. All the time the machine's on. Okay, it's not intrusive, but the Z88 is silent in operation. The plastics on the Amstrad are not quite up to the standard of the Z88, I don't think. They don't have the same feel or textures. And they don't have the same air of quality around its bezels and its casing but it's not far away it's you wouldn't be disappointed if you chose this rather than the z88 in fact i think you'd probably be better off choosing this and happier that you did so there we have two early portables what you would call laptops nowadays and um Two very different machines doing things in very different ways but essentially doing the same thing BBC basic on both word processors on both calendars on both notepads on both but the clear winner is unfortunately for Sinclair is the Z88 and I'm not knocking the Z. Unfortunately for Sinclair, it's not the Z88, and I'm not knocking the Z88 at all. It's just you're you're into the realms of standardisation when the Z88 was being built and being sold. The Amstrad is closer to a standard machine that you were going to get for a portable because it has a decent keyboard easier to expand as I said and it's easier to use it it's the, the way you use your color coded keys is a lot more intuitive and a lot easier for people who aren't computer savvy or computer literate to use they just want to use it as a tool as a product and that's where the Amstrad wins so if you're in the market for an early version of a laptop but you wanted to use it realistically 
the Amstrad is the only one and the only clear winner out of these. If you want to collect them both, then collect the Z88 as well because it's it's a piece of portable history and both and it was out at a time when portables were the size of suitcases which is why he was ahead of his time but Amstrad refined it and standardized it and made it into an appliance 